This is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. With the story of Meggie being jailed for life, along with Tony Grant, and to try and find some more of the facts from the actual day to give you a clearer picture of what happened so you can make up your own mind. The location was Cafe de Akbar in Bradford. The day was 2nd of January 2017. The last time that Meggie Khan and Yasser Yacoub would ever meet. Both of them didn't trust each other and both were apprehensive of the meet. Meggie brought with him Kashia Tahir and Yasser brought with him David Butlin, Rex Arapaji and Moshin Amin. The meeting was to last one hour where Meggie and Yasser would come to an agreement that Meggie would deliver a man who owed Yasser money for drugs as it was alleged by the prosecution and also Moshin Amin, the driver of the car that Yasser was killed in, in the trial at Crown Court. Meggie has been accused of being a, a snitch on several occasions by several people in court cases, all by his enemies that be granted and he still lived in the outskirts of Bradford in the Tong area. But on the day of the murder of Amriz Iqbal, he was driving around Bradford with Tony Grant in what the prosecution described as touring the area looking for his enemy. These are not really the actions of a man who is on the run or is under threat for his life. So we're looking to a little bit more onto the facts of who said that Meggie Khan was a grass. There is very little footage online of Meggie Khan for someone with so much money and who has such a reputation and people speak about him as if so many people know him. He was a very mysterious character. The only footage I received was that... Play what you say, man's ain't playing, look in the mirror, yeah I'm vain, straight out of the trap, buds and cane, man they get slapped, ain't no game, what you say, man's ain't playing, look in the mirror, yeah I'm vain, straight out of the trap, buds and cane, man they get slapped, ain't no game, what you say, man's ain't playing, look in the mirror, yeah I'm vain, straight out of the trap, buds and cane, man they get slapped, ain't no game, what you say, man's ain't playing, look in the mirror, yeah I'm vain, straight out of the trap, buds and cane, man they get slapped, ain't no game, I can't ride a nigga wet. Time is now. Black Diamond, Seaboy, Birthday, Colin Francis, the official after party at Aces, Lex and Mates. 2012, Saturday the 28th, no other place to be but Ben and Aces, Seaboy, Black Diamond. Upon leaving the meeting, Yacoub's convoy of cars with a Scirocco and an Audi, which he was in, they were stopped at the junction of the M42 Junction 24, Ainley Top. Police claim they boxed him in and Yasser reached for a handgun. At this point, the police officer fired three shots into his car, killing him instantly. Gino, David and Amin, who was also in the car Yasser had brought with him, were all arrested and charged with conspiracy to possess a firearm with intent to endanger life. They believed that that the, the police had intelligence that Yasser wanted to kill the man who owed him money, the man who Meggy was trying to arrange to deliver to him. It would later emerge that there was no CCTV, no body cam footage and no other witnesses to the murder of Yasser Yacoub. This would go on to create theories, conspiracies and the family were adamant that he was not a drug dealer. His dad actually made a YouTube channel speaking openly of his son's innocence and then accused the police of assassinating him. This would be another insinuation that Meggie was a snitch because people would say that Meggie was the one that set up Yasser. But Yasser was no angel to the police. Ya the police believed that Yasser was a drugs baron who laundered his money through his luxury car business in Huddersfield. They found a bulletproof vest and a machete in his bedroom at, at his heavily guarded house with uh, sensors and CCTV. His neighbour of 18 18 years told the press that the house had been shot up and Yasser was a known drug dealer and carried a baseball bat but as they said in the Justice for Yasser YouTube channel he was only ever convicted of a minor assault. He was on trial for the shooting of a man in 2009, Safrez Hussein and Mohammed Nasib. They were shot with a shotgun and a handgun in broad daylight travelling in their Corsa in Huddersfield. They had no injuries but Hussein had named Yasser as the shooter from a lineup, and he had never met Yasser. Police looked for him and he handed himself in in October and, and he went on trial in 2009. 
2009, uh, Rex Arapaji Gino, his friend that was also at meeting with Meggy, was cleared due to the inconsistencies in Hussein's story. And to find a little bit more about who was actually present at this fatal meeting, Yasser brought with him that day, David Butlin. David Butlin was actually one of the UK's deadliest men. <laughs> So called by Danny Dyer, he was in series two of his brother Ian, they are twin brothers, they are mixed martial arts experts, he is a fourth Dan at kickboxing, they are trained hunters and notorious street fighters in their hometown of Huddersfield, but due to a car accident that David sustained, he became a coach for his brother and also went on to do martial arts for the England team, trained them in 2009 and went to the World Cup. He had a reputation and was feared and yet respected. David met Yasser after his TV show with Danny Dyer aired. Yasser was so impressed with him, he hired him to be his personal trainer. They trained for six years and formed a friendship, David said in court, over their love of sports cars. He would visit Yasser once a month. He met Gino through Yasser and David only actually was caught with a small dagger in the car after Yasser was killed. He was jailed for 18 months for this offence. Moshin Amin, he was the driver of the Audi. He was sentenced to 18 years for conspiracy to possess a firearm and he had five incidents in custody because he spoke out in court. He accused Yasser of being a drug dealer. He also accused Meggy of being a grass. And this was another person who called Meggy a grass. So this is about the fourth person that called Meggy a grass in open court. And Mohammed Meggy brought with him Kashif Tahir. He was a big drug dealer, a convicted one already in Bradford. He had been convicted in 2013 for conspiracy and sentenced to four years. He was the one that Yasser and Meggy both brought to that meeting. But he was also jailed not long after that shooting on the motorway for six years, along with Toshif Tahir, who got five years when there was caught in a big drugs operation across Huddersfield, Leeds and Bradford. He was caught with one kilo of pure heroin and two kilos of mixing agent. Two brothers, John and Peter White, 50 years old and 31 from Doncaster, were also arrested a short distance away buying drugs for £16,500 cash. This was part of a sting operation, the police say, which usually means they had an informant of some kind. It happened in 2017 and went on to March 2018. They recovered 27 kilos of heroin and cocaine from dealers in the Leeds and Bradford area. This was one of the biggest ever stings and showed the extent of the drug business in the north of England. The biggest of these yields after they caught Kashia was a Shogun Mitsubishi that was stopped in Bradford. They found two keys of import grade cocaine. The two occupants were raided a house on Curzon Road, Bradford, where a drugs factory was discovered. On March the 2nd, 2018, they found 11 and a half kilos of import grade cocaine and empty wrappings for the, for the drugs worth a further 15 key. They also found 1.5 million and it would have been worth one and a half million if it had been full. They also found scales, gloves, cash and 24 kilos of a mixing agent. The industrial scale counting machine they found had approximately five million pound go through it in two years. And that was the seriousness of the people that was at this meeting. The co-accused of Amri's Iqbal's murder, the one after the motorway shooting that Yasser died in, which involved Meggy getting his life sentence, was Tony Grant. He was jailed for possession of ammunition without a certificate. He was also jailed for a prohibited weapon. He did six months. The father of three was also acquitted of trying to kill a man twice over a three-month period. He was found not guilty in 2017 of two counts of attempted murder and an alternative charge of using a firearm to endanger life. It was accused he attempted to kill Ali Farouk at the home of his partner in Cheshire. He has 36 offences and 12 convictions and he was also caught with four kilos of heroin and nine millimeter bullets and was jailed for nine years. So Tony Grant was a very serious man. The other person that was in the car, Rex Arapage, also known as Gino, was actually an immigrant. He came here at 14 years old in a lorry. He had no papers. He met Yasser at school and his dad actually helped him to gain citizenship and they had been friends ever since. So I think I'd be right to suggest that Gino was very loyal to Yasser. He was also involved in the shooting that Yasser was on trial for in 2009. They both got off with it. The inquiry, which is yet to be concluded, will, will reveal more information. And his claim the son was assassinated by the police. Zulfi, an old enemy of Meggy, accused him of being a snitch. 
Zeeshan and David Pemberton openly said in court during the Saffron Desi war that they had where they needed to get firearms to fight Meggy, they also called him a snitch. Moshin Amin called him a snitch and on several occasions during the Yasser Yacoub investigation, he has been accused of this. So the truth behind it with real evidence, there is not much, but all of his enemies did not underestimate Meggy and Yasser brought one of the deadliest men in the in the UK to meet Meggy. So if anything, whatever the full story is, whatever all the facts are, I think this will become more of a Bradford gangland legend with years to come, highlighting the extent of the money, power, respect in the north of England and the lengths people will go to to maintain the status of king of the north thank you for joining me please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and a special sponsored announcement is please check out our friend over at english kid reports at englishkid.tv on instagram twitter and youtube he'll bring you the very latest that's going on behind the scenes in the music he'll give his opinion he'll break it down be that gossip be that documentaries reviews and the latest stuff that's going on in the urban music scene he's up and so go and check out my boy Kareem over at English Kid Reports at EnglishKid.tv. Subscribe if you're a part of the culture. Let's get into the top five female rappers right now.